Hey guys, Rex here and welcome back to another Hypixel API related video. Today we're going to be starting a new series that is going to be focused on building small little scripts that have to do with Skyblock stuff. Uh, most of these, if not all of them, we're going to be using the Hypixel Skyblock API, not the normal API. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Now this first episode, very simple, we're going to be getting started on just being able to contact the Hypixel API. It's not going to be anything too special here. And uh, so we're just going to walk through each step on how to um, be able to set up to use your API key and stuff like this and send HTTP uh, get requests using Python. As per usual with my big projects like this, it's gonna be on my GitHub. So if you check down the description down below, you'll find a link to my GitHub. And if you click on that, there should be a rep repository called Skyblock Utils. And through that, you should be able to find the most up-to-date version of this code. So if you're not up-to-date on episodes, I suggest you watch the episodes first. Um, but if you know exactly what you want, you can just go grab that. This entire series is going to be full of open source code. Nothing is going to be hidden, um, except for my API key, of course, but I'll show you guys how to get your own API key in a second. Uh, now, just to get you guys set up here, we've got some very basic file structure. Uh, so we've got a folder. This is the folder we're going to be doing all the Skyblock Util stuff in. And we've got three files here. All right, so I've got a readme.md. This is simple. This is for you, this is to help you. I'm not gonna go over it because its only purpose is to help you guys figure stuff out, okay? So if you're struggling with getting this set up, read the readme and it'll give you some helpful tips. Uh, but that's mainly just for the GitHub uh, repo. It's not really for the project. It doesn't actually have any impact on how the program runs. So don't worry about it for now. First off, we need to set up our API key.json, and then later on we'll be working in our .py file. This is our Python file, our JSON. JSON, API key.json, for those who aren't aware from my previous videos, you'll see I've got another API key.json here. This is a very basic JSON file, and all it's going to do is it's going to store your API key. All right. So anytime you're using the Hypixel API, most of the time you're going to, it's, you're going to need a key. Uh, sometimes you don't need a key for some specific things. I believe the auction API doesn't always require a key. Um, but it's a little funky. Uh, so let's get started. Um, very simple. You're going to use curly braces like that. And then you're going to do API key. So this is going to be the key. Remember, JSON is key value pair. So that's the key. Now we've got the value. For the value, you're going to put in your API key here. So I've just put in X's. This won't work. What you've got to do is you've got to log on the Hypixel network, okay? And then after you've logged on the Hypixel network, you're going to go in chat and you're going to do slash API space new. And then you're going to press enter. It's going to give you this code that's alphanumeric. OK, so it's going to be A through Z and zero through nines. And it's going to look sort of under this format with these dashes and stuff. And uh, you're going to grab that. You're going to need that. So you're going to copy that. And then you're going to come into this folder. If you're trying to follow along and run the scripts with me, you're going to come into this after you download it off my GitHub and you're going to put in your API key here. OK, so after this episode's done, I'm going to put in my own API key here, but you're never going to see this JSON file again. We just need to use it for the setup at the very beginning. Once it's set up, the only time you have to touch it again is sometimes you might see the API key gets invalidated. And this is just it happens sometimes eventually uh, API keys don't really last forever. And so uh, it, it depends on what you're doing really, but I've seen most keys and end, end up not lasting forever. Um, usually they last several months at the very least though. And so uh, sometimes you'll see uh, invalid API key as an error response code from the API. If that ever happens, just go do slash API new again. You'll get a new API key as simple as that. And then you just paste in the new key. So just know I am not gonna be coming back to this file. If you have any questions, uh, join the Discord. You can comment, but it'll take forever to get a response. Um, and you, it, it, there's not as many people who can help you uh, or who will want to help you in the comment section. Um, just join the Discord. And in the, I've actually got more people in the Discord willing to help you than my entire channel combined. We've got a Discord of like almost 400 people right now. It's crazy. Most of them know how to code. And if you just ask for help, I promise you'll get a response like within an hour. It's insane. Anyways. Outside of that, we're going to go set up our Skyblock Utils PY. This is very simple. For those who have already seen my very basic uh, Python Hypixel API tutorial videos uh, that I posted back in like January, February, it's very similar to that. Uh, we're going to keep it as simple as possible because I know a lot of people using these scripts aren't 
proper coders. They're not people who do this, like I'm going to school for this now and stuff like this. Um, and I've done this in school for several years now. Just know, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to focus on like newer coders for this series. Um, so if you're more advanced, then you can just sort of speed through it. Uh, and if you're newer, well, feel free to follow along and ask as many questions as you need. To get started, we've got three or four main sections in the code, okay? So we've got our imports. These are the stuff we're going to import, the libraries we're going to import. We've got our functions, okay? We've got our uh, variables. And then we've got our, uh, our code. So generally, the way this works is you put them in this order. And the reason why is because your code usually needs to use all the stuff above it. And then your variables usually need your functions and your imports above it. And then your functions need the imports above it. And then the imports don't really depend on anything. Um, so you're good there. For imports, very simple. We're going to be importing requests. Okay, this is what we use for synchronous requests. I'm going to keep it super simple for all the new folks out there. We're not going to do anything fancy with asynchronous requests. If you feel like personally um, branching off of my tutorial series to make an async version, uh, I think that'd be super cool. I've already got a tutorial on how to do async requests as, as simple as switching out two things, one with another, and all the rest of the code will still work exactly the same. So all we got to do is switch that out. Um, but you can do that on your own time. I'm not going to personally tutorial series, uh, tutorial video on that unless people specifically want that later down the line, which feel free, as I said, to join the Discord and you can suggest uh, future episodes of this um, through that. Now, I know that inherently by importing requests, you are secretly in the background importing JSON as well. But I just wanted to be crystal clear that we are going to be using JSON. And so I'm, I'm importing JSON just in case. Well, not really just in case, but just to really hit home that we are going to be using JSON so that no one really forgets, I guess. Uh, and then we've got one last import. Now, we're going to be importing pretty print. We could import it like this. Now, the issue with importing it like this is then if I go in my code and I want to print. So if you guys don't know any basic Python, it'd be print normally. But for pretty print, we put a P in front. Pretty print is very simple. It turns jumbles of JSON or dictionaries and stuff like this um, from like a wall of text and numbers to a very organized list. And it just looks fancy in your command prompt. It just looks nicer. It's easier to read. Um, so that's what pprint does now. If we import pprint like this, we have we'd have to do it like this, and this is painful to write out every time. So what we're actually going to be doing is we can go up here and we can do from pprint import pprint. So it's saying from the pprint library import the pretty print function because we only really care about this one function from the library. Moving on from that, uh, we've got a very simple next step here. This is going to be our functions. But we're going to skip over that for now so that we can go ahead and import in our API file and API key. Okay. So the API file is this file here. We want to import this file. So we're going to call this API underscore file. Now, as per usual with constants, constants are variables that don't change. Um, they're not dynamic, they're static. You hard code them uh, generally. And they, that's just what they are from the start of the file. And then they don't really change throughout the file's run history. Uh, we do we do caps like this. So we're going to make it all caps. And then that is going to be equal to, and then we use the open function. This is for when you're handling with files. We're going to use open. And then open takes two parameters, okay? Two strings. Um, the first one is going to be the name of the file you're importing. So for us, that's api underscore key dot json. So api key dot json, just like that. And then here, you have to put in how you want to open up the file. So you can open it if you want to edit the file. You can open it if you want to add to the file. You can open it if you want to read from the file. We only want to do, and you can combine those. We only want to do one of those things, and that's read. So we're just going to put an R. Okay? If you want to edit it, you're going to put a W. If you want to add to it, you're going to put an A. And there's all sorts of funky stuff you can do. You can go ahead and look up the documentation for open yourself if you wish. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now because we're just going to be using R for this tutorial series. Next up, now that we've got the file, we need to actually extract the key from it. So to do that, right now, if we just import this file, it's saved as bytes. Now, this is not byte format. This is JSON format. But the 
Python script does not know that. It only sees it as bytes right now. So we're going to transform it from a jumble of bytes into the JSON format. Now JSON format, very easy to use in Python specifically because it's almost identical to our dictionaries. It just has a few extra rules here and there. Um, but other than that, it's very, very, very simple, uh, and very, very um, close or similar to our uh, dictionary syntax that we already use. So we're going to do json.loads, and then inside of this, we have to put in the data from our API file. Now, if we just put API file here like this, it won't work. It won't work because we're just saying we're just giving it a file and it can't load the file. We need to load the contents of the file. Okay. Now to extract the contents out of this file, we're going to do dot reads. Okay. Just like that. Oh, sorry. Not dot reads dot read. Just like that. All right. So we're going to read the data out of the file. That's going to be byte form. And then we're going to load that using JSON. So this is using the JSON library and using the function or the method from the JSON library called loads. So JSON.loads. We're loading that. And then that's going to give us this in JSON. Now, this in JSON can be useful, but we specifically only care about the key here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, then go ahead and just get the value at this key. So remember, this is the key. This is the value. It's a key value pair. So just go ahead and get that. And now API key, this in our, in, in our code here, will be should be equal to this, the string. All right, we're going to need that for future episodes, basically every episode. Um, now, just to make sure this works, what I'm going to do before we move on is I'm going to go ahead and we are going to try and print out this value. So I'm going to print API key just to see if it works. And I'm going to show you guys my command prompt here. All right, sorry about that. My command prompt broke for a second there. We're just going to do skyblock utils.py. We're going to run that and that's going to print our API key, which indicates that everything is good. Uh, it's all working and we don't have to worry about any of it. I'm going to go ahead and hide this again because we are no longer going to need the command prompt for this episode. And once you're done that and you've verified that it's working, what we're going to do is we're going to start building our helper functions. Now we're going to start uh, being able to throw URLs in to get uh, to send out get requests such that we can get information from the API. To do this, we're going to build a helper function here. It's going to be called get, uh, sorry, def, and it's going to be get info, just like that. And it's going to take in a URL. Okay. And then here, we're going to do some simple stuff. I'm just going to go over in a second here. Uh, it's going to be get uh, get dot call, or sorry, dot get, and then call. And then we're going to return r dot json. This is a very simple function. The way this works is you give it a call. Now, this call here is actually just going to be a URL. So you give the function a URL, and then what it does is it uses the request library with the get function to send a get request to that URL. Get request, if the URL is an API, and you send a get request, it'll give you back some information. Um, so we're saying, go get the information. That information is then in byte form, and then we want to return the JSON version of that byte form. Okay? So we're taking the bytes and just turning it to JSON, and then we're getting that back. And this is a helper function I've used many times. I use probably seen it in many, many, many of my other videos. Um, so I just, I know it works. You can feel free to test it all you want. Uh, we'll actually be testing it in the next video. Uh, but for this tutorial uh, episode specifically, we won't get around to doing that quite yet. Anyways, that's my name for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Once again, join the Discord. You can get help with anything way quicker there um, and as always uh, that's all i've got for you today i've been juicy 60 hopefully you found this in, uh, video helpful uh, that's all i've got uh, i've got nothing else see ya